Hi, I'm John Bagley and I'm the Chair of the International Fundraising Consultancy. And this is number eight in our series of 20 Fundraising Fundamentals. This is Dream Team, Dream Performance, Dream Results. Having the right staff and volunteers on board is absolutely crucial to getting a fundraising team working properly and achieving the results that you need. Staff, the right staff, are so important. I cannot overemphasize that. To get the right staff on board, you need to hire the right staff in the first place. You need to induct them in the organization properly so they know and understand what they're doing. The rest of the organization meets them. You need to motivate them, keep on motivating them through their career. You need to retain them and you need to look at how could they can be advanced in their work through the years. How can they increase their job? How can they do something better? How can they change? How can they move into new areas that they're keener on? That understanding of how their career is going to move is one of the retaining factors. So if we look at hiring the best people in the first place, obviously you need a good job description that's very clear. You need a person spec. What kind of person are you looking for? And when you do all that, think about diversity makes such a huge difference to a fundraising team to have a range of people on board. Do you need names when you're looking at your shortlist? Names often conjure up in people's minds things that they perhaps they shouldn't conjure up. Taking the names off, taking the age off the forms, that's a very good thing to do. It means people don't have some kind of innate prejudice against certain people. If we can avoid that, then we're certainly making a big jump forward. When you're taking up people's references, then check them thoroughly and always take up the references. Of course you want to know about people. There's a lot of people who perform very, very well at interview, but they turn out to be not very good at their jobs. I've met quite a few of them in my time. Checking the references is a really good way of doing it. And one of the crucial questions in doing that is, would you employ this person again? Try and phone and have some discussion about people because referees are more likely to be chatty on the phone, more likely to tell you things than they would if you're asking them to fill out a form because then that becomes official. It's the unofficial discussion that may be much more revealing. When you're interviewing the people, Score them against the job description and the person spec just to make sure they actually add up to that. Don't get persuaded by somebody who actually isn't the kind of person you were looking for to start with, but is highly articulate. And of course, being highly articulate is a great thing. Being self-confident is a great thing. But can they actually do the job? That's key. Okay, let's look at induction. Because I think induction is where people often, organisations often fall down. They don't properly introduce the person to the organisation. They don't make sure the organisation knows what they're going to be doing. And they don't introduce the people that that new person's going to be working with. So they have a positive relationship right from the get-go and an understanding about things. They need, obviously, to understand their own job and what they're going to be doing when and where these things will happen. That induction is a crucial part of making sure the organisation works properly. And sometimes a buddy system is very helpful. This is who you go to if you want some extra advice, if you're not sure about something, go and talk to this person. They've been there for a long time. People are sometimes reluctant to go to their boss and ask their boss questions about things that they feel, I should actually know that by now. But if there's a buddy there, they can move in that direction. If you can get some overlap with the last person who did that job, that's obviously very good. And sometimes that person will come back for a day or half a day just to chat to the new person doing their job. It can be very helpful. Think about the motivation of fundraisers. It's a, a wonderful job to do. And working for charities is wonderful. The thing that motivates you is the beneficiaries and how the beneficiaries are being helped. You're not motivated by your targets. You're motivated by it being a great thing to do. And as soon as possible, that fundraiser, that new person should meet with the beneficiaries, meet with the programme team, 
look and understand what they really do, because that'll be at the core of their motivation. That's what will help them through a lot of difficult situations they may find themselves in. When the organisation perhaps is being a bit unfair to them, or they're being pushed to do something, or they're working long hours, and then the motivation begins to kick in. And that really helps them get over those problem times, rather than feeling, oh, I should quit. This isn't right. For the long term, motivation is what will retain your staff. And so that motivation has to keep on going. I know that in fundraising we're driven by targets, driven by amounts of money we're supposed to be receiving, supposed to be drawing out of the, the trusts or the public or the major donors or wherever they are. And of course that's very important. and People should be motivated to try and get there. But they need that motivation about how the money will be spent. What are the great things that, that money is going to do for the beneficiaries? That side of things is terribly important for people. It's, the, it's moving their hearts as well as their minds. If you're going to retain people, then you've got to think about their careers, not just the job they're doing right now. But as they grow within their job, do they need extra support to do it? Will that make them more effective? Can they take on additional roles? Should they drop some roles they don't like and take on other roles they do? Is there the possibility of advancement? Can they grow within the fundraising department? Or if you're being successful and you're developing quite rapidly, can they grow their own little area? Do you need two or three people around them over a number of years? Think about how you can help these people, how you can develop things. I know that I've often been doing a role and a job which has seemed uh, hard and a lot of hard work and I've enjoyed it, but I've moved on for various reasons. And then the person coming in following me has had a salary increase that I never got and they've had additional support, which I never got. And it's strange how these things happen after somebody has left. They should happen, of course, before somebody has left. But also think about the staff you should not have there. Think about the zombies who have been there being useless for years and years and years. Those need to be tackled, either sacked or brought on board to be productive people doing a really good job. And that is something that a leader of a department or a CEO of an organisation must tackle and not be afraid of tackling. And also the more tricky people, the vampires, those people who infect other people, those people who undermine the organisation. They need tackling head on, dealing with, re-motivating or sacking if they are really undermining things. And I've seen quite a few of both those categories, zombies and fundraising in my time. It's crucial that managers and leaders engage with them, clear the decks, then you can get your team up and running a lot stronger. Then you can get a dream team. And a dream team, when everybody is working together and motivated, will produce a dream performance almost automatically. And that, of course, within fundraising, will produce your dream results and that will change your beneficiaries' lives. Good luck. The next edition of our Fundraising Fundamentals next week will be number nine, and it is Don't Go Where Angels Fear to Tread. There are certain things, certain areas of fundraising you might need help and assistance with. So, I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much. Bye for now.